Hey guys, it's me, Mae McDonough, and this is the Psychedelic Cherry. Today we're talking about how to etch your own circuit board, like this. Hey guys, welcome back to the Psychedelic Cherry. I'm Mae McDonough. Um, Today I'm going to show you how to etch your own circuit board um, from something that looks pretty simple like this, piece of copper board, um, into an actual circuit board that you can drill and wire up and use in your pedals. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do is go online and look up the circuit board layout for whatever project you want to build. Um, I chose the Valve Wizard, so I went online and I found the circuit board layout and then I popped it into Photoshop and I put it onto a piece of paper, uh, let's see, nine times. Once you have done that, you're going to do what I did, which is you need to buy some PCB transfer paper. Now there are other ways to do this, this is just my way. Then you're going to go to uh, a Kinko's FedEx and you're going to load some of this paper into a Xerox machine and you're going to photocopy the piece of paper that has your nine circuit board layout. Once you've Xeroxed it onto the matte side of your blue transfer paper, it'll look something like this. As you can see, I've already cut into this. And you're just going to want to cut uh, one of your circuits out. Um, you want to cut closely, but leave a small border around the circuit. Um, it's always good to protect yourself. All right, so once you've done that, you're going to want to heat up an iron, OK? Um, I personally have gone through a lot of trial and error as to find out what temperature it should be at because my iron doesn't uh, actually use temperature measurements. It has stupid settings like cotton and silk. Uh, so <laughs> unfortunately it took me a long time to figure out that really for me hot cotton setting is the best setting. Um, it really needs to be a pretty hot iron to do the transfer well. So once that's heating you want to get out your copper board. Now, and as you can see, I've already trimmed this copper board to size. But if it's not to size, um, what you can do is score it with a razor blade, an X-Acto knife, or um, my favorite tried and true, very easy, quick method is to just mark it with a marker and use some trimming shears for the hedges. Um, maybe not for the hedges, the small kind, the small clipping shears for the garden. Um, and it'll clip right through this copper board. Once you've cut your copper board, you want to wash it with some soap and water. That is just to get any residue that might interfere with this process off of the copper side of your board. So now we are ready to put our transfer onto the copper board. We take this ink side down onto the copper board. Make sure there's not any uh, stray pieces of dog hair or fabric. Now, I failed to mention beforehand the reason you need to use a Xerox machine, a copy machine, is that regular old printer ink from my home printer will not work. Okay. So very carefully here, because I don't want to cause any smearing when I set this iron down, I'm going to very carefully and evenly place it onto the circuit board. Oh, see it's wanting to spin. That would be because I have a cable going here. So I'm just not going to move my hand, I'm just going to sit here. <laughs> and make sure this thing doesn't move and hopefully I'll get a good transfer out of it. We'll see. This usually takes two to four minutes. Okay. 
Okay, let's check this out. So what we're gonna do, <laughs> I almost touched it. So you're just gonna want a cool glass of water. And uh, you're gonna very carefully grab this very hot um, piece of copper and just dunk it in the water. You can use tongs if you'd rather. I'm reckless, I live on the edge. Um, once it's in the water, it almost in, um, instantaneously becomes cool to the touch. So now we're gonna grab a rag to dry this off. And now is when we find out if the transfer worked. If the transfer isn't very good, we just cut one off and do it again. Um, now, like I said before, you really want to try and get um, your transfer as perfect as possible. Um, but you're likely going to find that there's a few lines that aren't fully completed. In that case, uh, we're going to use this really nifty etch-resistant pen um, to fill in those spots. Now, you can do this with a regular old Sharpie um, if you're making minimal traces. Uh, if you really are missing quite a bit, or if you've decided to draw your own circuit onto the copper board, don't use a Sharpie. And, but So now we're just gonna look for traces that need a little help. Um, now it's time to etch. So we're gonna head outside, we're gonna put on some protective gloves and goggles, and we're gonna start working with dangerous chemicals. All right, so now that we've got our gloves and our protective goggles on, and we're looking super cool, uh, you're gonna get some ferric chloric acid. Um, this is the reason we're wearing protective gear. It's bad for you. Don't touch it, don't drink it, don't eat it. Okay, so, sorry I have to squat down here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and just rinse this underwater, so now we're gonna wash it off with some acetone. Put some acetone on a cotton ball and just rub it off. This actually looks pretty good, so um, if yours turns out well, then you are ready to move on to the drilling process um, and you've successfully etched a board. Now if it doesn't turn out very well, I hate to say it, but you kind of have to start over because it's not worth it to drill a bad board. It's just not. All right, so I hope this has been of use to you, and uh, yeah, go out, etch your own boards, make your own pedals. I'm Mae McDonough, and this has been the Psychedelic Cherry. <laughs>